previously on Left Behind. Irene, Ray, if when you get this message, I'm at O'Hare and trying to get home. It may take a while. I sure hope you're there. Call it a rapture special. A what? Well, what would you call what's happened? Uh, excuse me, do you know anything about First Officer Christopher Smith? Was he the suicide? No, I, I don't think so. Was there a suicide? Lots of them. Nikolai Carpathia. Never heard of him. You will, you will. You can pray for me, though, if you think of it. I don't know. I don't think I can enjoy this. I guess I'm not much for praying. Don't worry. You will be. Based on the best-selling novel, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 3 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. You the charter service? Right. The name's Williams. I need a ride. Okay, here's the deal. I fly out tomorrow morning, $2 a mile, Ooh. cash up front. Longest trip gets me. Okay. Uh, you're in Waukegan, right? Right. Where are you headed? New York City. <laughs> right. You've got problems. Nothing major on the East Coast is open. Kennedy, National, Logan, Dulles, LaGuardia, all shut down. Oh, it's kind of important. How close can you get me? I know a couple of little strips we might get into. Uh, one in New Jersey, another in Pennsylvania... Got to get your own transportation from there. And you're flying early tomorrow? If you're the lucky one, how are you paying? Traveler's checks. Good. Leave me a number where I can get back to you. Excuse me? Yeah, I'm sorry, miss. You're going to need to wait in line with My everybody. father's a pilot. O- okay, that's nice. Now, uh, okay, okay. He's a pilot with your airline and told me if there was ever an emergency, I should come here and PanCon could get me home. Okay, okay. Where's he based? Chicago. Captain Rayford Steele. S-T-E-E-L-E. And uh, you know he's still alive? Excuse me? The disappearances. How do you know your dad survived? I don't know. I, I hadn't thought about it. You don't want to go home to an empty house, do you? No. But my mom and little brother are, are there, I guess. Um, hang on a second here. Uh, here he is. <laughs> Actually, it looks like he's okay. Oh. Landed uh, an aborted London run at O'Hare earlier this morning. I've been trying to call them. I left a message the one time I got through, but okay. then I just okay, kept hang on, getting... hang on, hang on. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, why don't you just have a seat over there? There's one more flight leaving tonight. Palo Alto to... Oh, I don't know. Let's just call it the Chicago area for now. I'll try to get you on standby. No promises. Thanks. I'll be right over here. Nikolai Carpathia into the role of Romanian president. I am humbled that in such a troubling time others would allow me to serve them in this way. I am now more than ever committed to the process of peace and dedicate myself to do whatever I can to promote that peace, not only here in my homeland, but around the globe as I am allowed. Carpathia is 33. More after this. I can't believe. I can't believe they're gone. Jeff. How do you explain it, Dad? They were such good kids. You have to be strong. We'll get through this. This is the judgment of God, Dad. I'm telling you, something's not right. Here, let me get you something to eat. Uh, You want a sandwich? Uh, Maybe some coffee? Sharon, she could have made it to that lodge and back 50 times by now. Sharon's a good driver, son. She knows how to take care of herself. But why wouldn't she call? She must know something by now. I'll get it. Uh, Evening, officer. Mr. Williams? Yes. Jeff Williams? Uh, No, Jeff's over here. Come on in. Did you find the kids? Is it about my wife? Calm down, Jeff. What? Uh, there's no easy way to say this, Mr. Williams. Your wife is Sharon Williams. Yes, what happened? We found your wife's car in a ravine about 20 miles from here on Route 36. It had rolled onto its top. Is she okay? Sit down, Jeff. Tell me about my wife! The terrain is pretty rough up there. One of our deputies got close enough to see inside. Now, 
She could have been thrown from the vehicle somewhere down the ravine, but he noticed a set of clothes on the driver's side. Oh, no. Jeff, where are you going? I have to see for myself. You need to stay here. I wouldn't recommend you try it until morning, sir. If she did get thrown from the car, I'm going to find her. Now get out of my way. I'm sorry, officer. He found out his children are gone just a little earlier. And now this... I understand. Thank you for letting us know. I'll radio the canyon. Let them know your son's on his way. Thanks. Sorry for your loss. Hello? Dad, it, it's Cameron. Are you all right? I'm okay. Jeff ran out to take the four-wheel drive over to see the accident. Accident? Sharon was picking up the kids at a retreat or something. Story is, she never got there. Car flipped over. No trace of her except her clothes. And you know what that means. She's gone. Looks that way. Your brother's taking it hard. Wants to see for himself. Trouble is, the kids are gone, too. All of them. Everybody at that retreat thing in the mountains. State police found about a hundred sets of clothes. Man, this gets worse with every phone call. Tell Jeff I'm thinking about him. I mean, if he wants to talk, I'm here. I don't think he wants to talk to anybody, unless you got some answers. <laughs> That's one thing I don't have, Dad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Wish you were out here with us. Oh, do you? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Yeah. Oh. Well, if you wanted me out there, it'd be the first time. Well, this is the kind of time when maybe we change our minds. About me? I doubt it. Cameron, for once, can't you think of somebody other than yourself? Oh, listen. If, uh, if there's some kind of memorial service, tell them I'll try to be there, all right? You'll try? Well, that's all I can promise. Uh, you can imagine what's going on at Global. Uh, we have to put reports together from around the world into something people can understand. Your brother's afraid it was the last judgment of God. He really thinks that? Yeah, but not me. I asked our pastor. He said if Jesus Christ was taking people to heaven, he and I would be gone. You and Jeff, too. Why? I never claimed to have any devotion to the faith. You know good and well we had you in church and Sunday school from the time you were a baby. You're as much a Christian as any one of us. <laughs> Apparently, that's true. Uh, tell Jeff I'm thinking about him. I'll talk to you later. simply not true. It is true. Going all the way back to Roswell and the alien autopsy. Oh, well, now I understand where you're coming from. It's simply a fact that there are countless numbers of alien sightings. Alien Chloe, is that you? Oh, Captain Steele? Uh, Hattie, <laughs> what's the matter? Oh, I've been trying to reach you for hours. My phone's been dead. Oh, there's no word yet on my mom and my sisters, but what about you? I got a message from Chloe. Oh, that's right. You told me at O'Hare. What about your wife and son, though? People want answers. No. And the answer to this is we just no? don't know. Uh, we can't explain the disappearance uh, of... Rayford, are you sure? I'm afraid so. Uh, their bedclothes are here, but that's all. Oh, Rayford, I am so sorry. Uh, is there anything I can do? Maybe... Do you want some company? Uh, I no, could come... No, thanks, Hattie. Oh, can you hold on a minute? No, go ahead. I'll call you later. Okay. Bye. H hello Hattie Durham? Yeah? This is Cameron Williams. Who? Buck. Buck Williams from the plane, Global oh, Weekly. Oh, yeah, Buck. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't know anything about my family, do you? Well, I do, and it's good news. Oh, really? Yeah, someone from my office tells me they reached your mother. Oh. She and your sisters are fine. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, California's a mess. It may be a while before you can talk oh, to them. I just really appreciate your calling. Oh, well, how about you? Have you reached your family? Well, I heard my dad and brother are okay. Oh, I'm still God. waiting to hear on my sister-in-law and their kids. Um, are they really young? Uh, both under ten. Why? Well, do you remember on the plane? Uh-huh. The children are all gone. It's the same on the news. Even the unborn are gone. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not saying your brother's kids are no, gone, I but... No, I know, I know. It's just all so strange. Well, I hope you get in touch with your family. Oh, thanks. I have a few more calls here, well, so... Well, you know, Buck, you could you could call me sometime. I'm, you seem like a really nice person. Do you live here in Chicago? No, it's hard to say where I live these days. <laughs> I was in town this week to patch up things with a supervisor at Global Weekly Chicago Bureau. Well, 
If it isn't the legendary Buck Williams. Uh, Lucinda, I come to make peace. Oh, really? Why do I have this funny feeling that something big is happening in my own backyard and your name will be on the byline? Uh, Lucy, I'm hey, not here. Hey, hey, hey. All right, sorry, Lucinda. I told Plank it would take a face to face to get you back in my good graces. And here I am. Touching. With a tip. Uh, call it a peace offering. I'm listening. I happen to know that the Chicago NFL franchise purchase is not going through as planned. You're not serious. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I did see you take a serious glance at that phone. You little creep. That wasn't a very Christian thing to do. Oh, come on. Don't start with that again. Come on, Buck. You know you got your head turned around when you saw what God did for Israel. Granted. But don't start calling me a Christian. Deist is as much as I'll cop to. Stay in town long enough to go to my church. God'll get you. Oh, excuse me, sir. You were the one trying to get to New York, right? Right. Listen, I can't tell everyone this, or it'll start a stampede. Mm -hmm. But the limo companies have moved their comm center to the median strip near Mannheim Road, just outside the airport. Oh, where's that? Uh, follow the exit airport signs east. About a mile. Maybe two. Oh, can't imagine the prices. <laughs> No, I'm sure you can't. A hundred bucks ahead to any suburb, cash only. We're filling every car. How about Lakeshore Drive? No Chicago destinations, just the burbs. No credit cards? I'll say it again, cash only. If you know you've got your checkbook at home, you can plead with the driver to take you and trust you. Any more questions? All right, who needs a ride? Hey, easy, easy, one at a time. Dirk, Buck Williams. Buck, where are you? Uh, Chicago. Paid 50 bucks to borrow a cell phone in the limo. Can you believe it? Buck, you have to get here. Yeah, yeah, listen, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't make it. Uh, there's been this little problem of people disappearing. Maybe you heard about it? Buck, we need to talk. Is London out of the question? Uh, Steve Plank wants me back in New York as soon as I can get there. Look, Buck, what I said before, it's happening again. I left a message on your machine in New York from another phone. I'm pretty sure this one's not safe. Dirk, I don't need any more conspiracies, honestly. I told you, when these guys mean things happen, I've been right every time. You've been reliable, I'll admit it. I have something new. Uh, Dirk, you always have something new, something everybody needs to know. I assure you, this is something you need to look uh, into. I, I called to let you know I wouldn't be there, I'm sorry. Buck, it all fits. The disappearances, the UN meeting, there's not much time. All right, all right. If it's so important, I'll get out my laptop. I told you, I can't talk about it over the phone. Dirk! I don't even want to send it over the internet. We have to meet. Dirk, it's out of the question. Just tell me. I can't, Buck. But you have to listen. There are people here. And I assume there as well. I think they are... Need to know. Dirk? Dirk? Uh, you think they are what? Hello, Dirk? Hey, you about done with that phone? Yeah, yeah, just about. One more call. Yeah, that's another 50, you know. Right. Washington's. Hi, uh, Buck Williams of Global Weekly. Can I speak with Lucinda? My mom's not here. Oh, probably still at the office. Uh, I'll try her there. She's not at the office. Okay, well, can you tell me where she is? She's nowhere. I'm the only one left. Mama, Dad, everyone else is gone. Oh, are you sure? The clothes are here, right where they were sitting. Oh, man. I'm sorry, son. That's all right. I know where they are. Y you know where they are? If you know my mama, you know where she is, too. She's in heaven. Well, are you all right? Uh, is there someone to look after you? My uncle's here, and a guy from my church. Probably the only one who's still around. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, hang in there, fella. <sighs> I ever needed a stiff drink as now. I don't want Raby to know, Ray. <laughs> That's dishonest. It's prudent. He doesn't know everything, and he doesn't have to. <laughs> From the lady who always says to be truthful. Telling the whole truth doesn't always mean telling everything you know. You tell your crew you're taking a bathroom break, but you don't go into detail about what you're doing in there, do you? Irene. I'm just saying you don't have to make it obvious to your preteen son that you drink hard liquor. You keep it up here. Over the sink in the back of the cabinet. Oh. Oh, I 
and Chloe. Gotta call PanCon. Oh. Well, at least I don't have to plan for a funeral. That's one positive about this. No bodies to bury. Oh, this is not helping. I'd rather be able to see him, though. Just one more time. Even if it's in a casket. Uh, this is Rayford Steele. Please leave a very brief message. I'm trying to keep this line open for my daughter. Chloe, if it's you, I'm either sleeping or close by, so give me a chance to pick up. Do whatever you have to to get home. Any airline can charge it to me. I love you. <laughs> so, um, this is it, huh, God? And you don't give second chances? You take your people away and you leave the rest of us to grieve? Realize you were right? And, uh, if this is the rapture, if it's real, then all that talk of judgment and hell must be real. Is that what's ahead? For me, for Chloe? Irene always talked about a loving God, and if there's no second chance, then so be it. But if there is, If you're there, please bring my little girl back, Sandy, please. I'll do anything. All right, uh, Chloe, I think I have it worked out for you. Here. My dad always said you people could do magic. Well, listen, we try. Uh, just show this to the agent at the door, and I'm sorry it's going to take you the long way around. Just so I get home. Yeah, um, good luck. Thank you so much. Be careful, okay? Steve, this is Buck. Uh, it's late, but I've made it out of O'Hare. Uh, I'm at some dive near a small airport. Uh, just talk with the pilot. He's flying me out first thing in the morning. I'll see you when I see you. Buck, you said this message center is confidential. Sure. I'm not even going to identify myself, but you know who it is. Something major. The big man, the one I call the Supreme Power Broker internationally. He met here the other day, and there was a third party at the meeting from Eastern Europe. My sources say your man introduced him to people in China, the Vatican, Israel, France, Germany, here and in the States. Now watch the news for the installation of a new leader in Europe. I know there aren't any elections scheduled and no changes of power in the works, but watch and see if I'm right. Get here as quick as you can, Buck. Your man, hop in. You Ken Ritz? The one and only. That's a nice looking cut you got there. What's the other guy look like? I think how to jump in out of a plane. Could be worse. So you jump out of planes, huh? I'll be collecting the cash up front. You do get down to business. We're talking New York City. I'm gonna get you as close as I can. Uh, at two bucks a mile, that's fourteen hundred and change. Round it off to fifteen hundred for the taxi service, and we got a deal. And deal. Pretty expensive taxi service, though. Especially for a guy coming out of the Midpoint Motel. Oh, the room was lovely. Even had hot water. <sighs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Great. Now, if I can only find in the end, he took all his people to heaven and gave everyone else one more chance. Oh, there's got to be an index or some notes here. Revelation. Okay, maybe I should start at the end. Uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Mm, sounds like stuff they say in church. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Uh, 
wonder why I don't... Oh, okay, okay. Words of Jesus in red, of course. So, Jesus said he was coming quickly. But this was written a couple thousand years ago. How quick is that? Uh, let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. What does that mean? Maybe it's too late. Maybe I missed it. Maybe. Maybe next Sunday, Randy. But Dad, that's what you said last week. Do you want me to fix the bike for you or not? I don't have all the time in the world. Well, how about next Sunday, Dad? Can you go to church with us next Sunday? I wish I could, son. Oh, Ray. I am so sorry. What are you going to write when you get to New York? Uh, I'm kind of bouncing that around in my head. What's your read? Angus thing I've ever seen. Of course, I've always believed in UFOs. You're kidding. I'm not talking about little green men. I'm talking about the documentable stuff, you know, like astronauts have seen. Do you ever see anything? Yeah, a couple of unexplainable incidents, some lights. Once I thought I was flying too close to a squad of choppers. Uh, I radioed a warning, then lost sight of them. Never got a response from the Naval Air Station. Uh, a few weeks later, close to the same spot, my instruments went wacky on me. Dials spinning, meters sticking, that kind of thing. Well, what'd you make of it? A magnetic field or some force like that. Huh? So, you really think it's some kind of force well, field? I'm just something? saying it's not like E.T. phone home. There has to be intelligent life out there, and I'm thinking they're sophisticated enough that they can do things we've never dreamed. Well, like making people disappear right out of their clothes. Well, it sounded pretty silly until the other night, didn't it? Oh, yeah, sure did. I've always laughed at people who think their thoughts are being read. But look who's missing. Everybody who's gone is either under 12 years old or an unusual personality. You think they all had something in common? Something that made them easier to snatch? That's what I think. So we're still here because we're strong enough to resist, or maybe we weren't worth the trouble. It's almost like some force was able to read the level of resistance, evaluate it, and rip those who offered less right off the face of the earth. Look, bottom line is this, Williams. I don't have a clue, and I don't mind telling you I'm just as scared as you are. Oh, scared of what? That it might happen again. Maybe this force will crank up the juice and come back for the rest of us. Hello? Mr. Steele, this is Amy, Chloe's roommate. Amy, I I is she okay? Is she there? Chloe's fine. She's trying to find a way home. She asked me to try to get through. Said she'll call when she gets there or she'll get a cab home. She's on her way. She didn't want to wait. We tried to call lots of times, but the lines are all... Yeah, I, I know. I tried calling you guys a lot, too. Uh, are you all right? <sighs> Scared to death, like everybody else. I can imagine. Um, did you lose anyone? No, and I kind of feel guilty. Seems like everyone I know lost someone. I mean, I lost a few friends, but nobody close. No family or anything. Mm. How about Chloe's mom and, and brother? I'm afraid they're gone, Amy. Oh, no. I'd appreciate it. If you talk to Chloe before me, I want to tell her. Okay. <sighs> don't worry. I don't think I could tell her even if you wanted me to. to meet in New York later this week. And now we have uh, more details on the breaking story. Uh, we have more information to report to you about a plane crash. Uh, that plane originating in Palo Alto, California, headed toward Chicago. The plane has crashed. A wreckage was thrown over a two-mile area. Authorities are telling us there are no survivors. We'll keep you up to date with this story as details become available. Left Behind, the dramatic audio edition, is based on the book by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick. Directed and produced by Todd Bastille. The dramatic audio edition of Left Behind is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.